So now we're going to look at functions in Go, and I forgot to tell you my anecdote on Chinglish, so I'll tell you that at the end of this video. Remind me. Tell us about Chinglish, or don't. Who wants to know about my personal anecdote on Chinglish? Who does not? <laughs> I know. That's cool. All right, so we're going to learn about functions. And to learn about functions, I'm just going to go back to Golang Playground. And at Golang Playground, uh, I'm going to just create something. And so um, I, had, I had here x colon equals 36. And then I had y colon equals 6. And then I had print line x plus y. And I could format that and run it. And 42. What if I wanted to create a function to add numbers together? Okay, so I could do func add, and that's the first place you start when creating creating a function. Is just basically like that. You have the. Let me see what the right word is to use. Go lang spec, and I'm going to go to spec, and uh, I'm going to look under lexical elements. What the hell does lexical mean? Lexical define. Uh, of or relating to the words or vocabulary of a language, relating to or of the nature of lexicon or dictionary. That's cool. So, of or relating to the vocabulary of a language, lexical elements, and comments can be like this and that, or like this. Tokens, right? Uh, identifiers, keywords, operators, delimiters, and literals, right? Operators and delimiters and li literals. Uh, semicolons, they are in the language. You don't put them in. The compiler puts them in and knows where to put them in. So they are there even though we never see them. Identifiers is a, a name for a variable or something like that. And then we have keywords like var and like funk. So the correct term for me to use would be a function starts with the keyword funk. Right, And so I emphasize precision because this is engineering. Engineering requires precision. If you're working at the BMW factory plant, you would not just go get a bolt. You would get a specific bolt that has a certain strength of a specific size designed for this one location. Specific engineering. Engineering is specific, even if I have a hard time saying that word. Right? And so, you know, it is one of the things about this field. you got to be specific. <laughs> and so a funk uh, is a key word. And so just trying to use the right terminology. And by the way, I forgot to talk about the difference between uh, declare, assign, and initialize which I'll do in a second, because you'll see those words used, and uh, you should know the difference between them. Being specific, it's an engineering field. So func starts with the keyword, a function starts with the keyword func, all right? And then we have the receiver, if there is one, and then we have the identifier, and how do you name things in Go? Don't use underscores. Most of the time, the, the naming convention in Go is to keep things as short as possible, and the closer you are to where you name something and use it, the shorter it becomes. So if the scope of X is only from here to there, it's X, baby. Because I could see where X is declared and assigned, and I could also see where it's used. I don't need, you know, the starting value. Ah, oh, that's just harder to read. Make it very clean and lean and readable. And somewhere in the spec it talks about that. So go look at the spec and look at naming. Uh, let's look at effective go. Let me see if I can find it. I haven't been here in a while. Looked at this in a while. Is that Mona saying she's here with food? Nope. And uh, name. Name, package names, interface names, mixed caps. That looks pretty promising. And uh, here it is. Helpful if everyone using the package can use the same name to refer to some, which implies names should be good, short, concise, evocative. By convention, give lowercase single word names. 
When that doesn't work, uh, it's, uh, it's camel case. Let me just see where they talk about that. Getters, inter mix caps. Finally, the convention goes use mix caps or mix caps rather than underscores to write multi-word names. Again, I am not as good of a programmer nor as experienced in a programmer by any long shot as Rob Pike, Ken Thompson, or Robert Gressmer. And I want to conform to the standards of this language so that, you know, when I work on a team, I don't look like an idiot and I, I'm able to do things in the right way and I'm able to back up the way I'm doing it. So if people are like, oh, we use all caps with underscores here, you could say, oh, you guys don't conform to the Go standard, you know, practices. And if they say, what's that? You can say, oh, you know, you're supposed to use mixed caps. But that's cool. I, I mean, I'm just working here. <laughs> but you know, and you're informed, right? So it's mixed caps. And that said, we totally have in our code base all capitals with underscores in some places. But that's, that's the recommendation. All right, so we have the func I, keyword. Then we have a receiver, which we'll learn about if we get that far. Then we have an identifier, uh, mixed caps. And this is also known as camel case sometimes because you can see the humps. And then we have, we have our parameters, right, which are different than arguments. So a parameter, parameter is in the declaration of a func, right? An argument passed into the calling of a func. So we'll see that in action in a second. So then we have, we have parameters and then we have returns, whatever returns, and you can have multiple returns. And then we have code goes here. <coughs> so I'm just going to put a comment around that. Another way I could do a comment is a code comment block like that. So now I should still be able to run all this and it's just a bunch of comments. Right? But that is the general layout of a, that's how you that's how a functions declared. So we are just going to do a function like this. We don't need a receiver. We just need an identifier add to nums. I'm just going to call it add nums. And then it's going to take in, uh, it's going to take in A, B. They could be anything, int. They're both ints. And it's going to return an int. And I don't, if I have one return, I don't need parentheses around them. So remember, these are curly braces or braces. These are parentheses or parens. <coughs> Just being specific. I've never had a speech problem. I don't know why I fumble on that one. And then I could do font, uh, I could do uh, C colon equals A plus B, and I could return C. Alternatively, oh, I misspelled it. I do seem dyslexic today. Sleep deprivation. This morning, like, you know, I'm just, I'm totally, I know I'm sleep deprived and I'm like walking around and I'm like, oh, I forgot to get that. And then I'm like looking for my speedo so I could go swim, look all over the house. And then finally I'm like, screwed. I just have to go to the bedroom where everyone's asleep and get it out of the dresser because I have another one in there. So I get it and I'm leaving and it's hanging on the doorknob right in the room where I was looking. I'm like, how did I not see that? All right. So that, that's this, right? And so now I could call that function. So I could, I could come in here and I could just say Z, which is the answer. And I could call add nums and I could pass in 36. 42, and then I can print Z. And that's modularized my code. Whoops. <coughs> because, and let's just run it, make sure it works. 78, 36, oh, I want 36 plus 6. And then my answer is 42. That's modularized my code because now I could do this. I don't know what this would be, just G or something. And I could do 12 plus what? Uh, 7. I'm able to call that function over and over and over, right? Modularized my code. So I could also write that instead of assigning to C and then returning, there I could just do this. Return A plus B. And... Uh, 
<clears throat> and just see if there's anything else to say about that. So the last thing I want to say is what's the difference between declare? Here's declare, bar x int. I am declaring the variable of the identifier x, the variable x, so the identifier is x. I'm declaring that the variable x is an int. Now I could only assign int to x. I can't assign anything else to it. That's what it means to be statically typed. If I do x colon equals 100 and then print x, fine. Or not. I have to have to do that. So that's a good example, actually. Because I had the colon equals, it was trying to declare it again. And look at my error. I've declared that x is an int, and it says no new variables on the left side of colon equals. It has to be a new variable. This is not a new variable. This variable's been used. But if I just assign to x, so there's declare, here's assign, right? I've declared and I've assigned to x, right? So that's declare, there's assign, right? And then I print it out. And I could also do this. Initial, well, there's initialize. Sorry. And initialize is to declare and sign at all one time. I've initialized that variable. I've declared it and I've signed to it. It's ready to use. So that's declare. That's assign. That's initialize. Here's a function being used that we created right here, right? Pretty cool. So now I've got a hands-on exercise for you, and then it's lunch. And the hands-on exercise is, uh, I don't know, just see if the parameter. Oh, so a parameter, This was the these were the parameters, and they're both ints. So I could have said a int, b int. I could have also done it like that, right? But if they're both the same, I could do it like this. So a int, b int, I'll leave it like that. And so that is, these are the parameters, these are the arguments. Okay, so that's the difference between a parameter and an argument. Can you put a non int into x? What's the error? Oh, if I pass in what? If you pass in like x equals 5.2 up there. Like that? Uh, pass something in that doesn't uh, work? You, you Cannot use 12 type string as type int. Yeah. So that's statically typed. Or if I did 12.4, cannot uh, constant 12.4 truncated to integer. Hi, Mona. Hey, Mr. McDowell. Um, right here, right in the front, there's nowhere to park, so I'm right on the middle. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, resume, stop recording, pause recording, so we're still going. So the last thing I want to do is just give you a couple of assignments. So I want you to... Uh, Here's your hands-on assignment. Create a function that allows you to multiply two arguments and returns their result. And by two, I'm going to do two arguments which are both of type int and returns the result as an int and create a function that takes a string as an argument and then returns a string which concatenates this which does this I'm just gonna do does this does this So you'll need to do, uh, that's how you'll return it, okay? So you'll return that. Value argument passed in of type string. So the argument that's passed in of type string will go there, okay? So you'll return like that. You might want this around it. I don't know. I haven't done that. So try that and see if that works.
and uh, and we'll do the solution after lunch. Oh, Chinglish, you ready? So here's a. I went through a period in my life where I had like a midlife crisis, and I wanted to be an author, and so I just would write, and I wrote all these books, but I wrote this one book all in Chinglish. <laughs> And it's Golden, Golden Economy Country Booster. Nice. And here's the description of the book. I'll just leave it up for you. The great people love poetry and celebrate the national pride. <laughs> it's the description of the book. It's kind of funny. want to see the two signs. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put the assignments back up. So enough poetry, man. Let's, let's, let's program. There you go. All right, there are the assignments.